Welcome to another episode of BRAPCAST. Good evening, BRAPCAST. Tonight we are here with Danny Laminger and Aaron Burnaby from the Holy Rollers. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Very good, as always. So we're here to interview you tonight about the Holy Rollers. Tell us a little bit about the club. Where are you guys and what do you guys do? Okay, we're um, based out of St. Charles, Missouri, and um, we're just right across the river from St. Louis, and uh, we, uh, we, we actually ride out of a church, believe it or not, we ride out of a church, and what we do is we, when we get together as a group, we try to um, go out there and do kind of pay it forward acts sometimes. That's really cool. Um, so you, you come out of the, off the church, is, is the group all... Um people of your parish or oh no no we actually there's only a small percentage of us that is actually actually part of our church uh we actually have writers off from all, all over the place that's really cool um how how did you guys start um years ago um my friend larry and i um this it was 10 year actually it'll be 10 years this coming october is when we started and my friend larry bought a moped or got a moped for free given to him and then um, he told me about it and so I picked up one just to ride with him and we started riding and then our group kind of grew from there and um, currently we have about 30 to 35 members of our group um, but we usually um, on our rides we usually average anywhere between 8 to 15 on average it's very rare that we all get together all at once but when we do it's like a mini rally Wow that is uh great turnout for any crew anywhere yeah but yeah our average ride is about 8 to 15 so and we ride every other we ride every other sunday what what does that look like when you guys get together for a ride that's pretty fun we actually just we like so we, we we either take side roads or back roads we try trains of course up all the time and uh uh, because, you know, with mopeds, they break down a lot. We kind of pick locations where we know we could stop at if we had to, like uh, gas stations and things along the way. And then um, we usually ride on the average of about 60 to 75 miles every ride. Wow, that is an endurance ride if I've ever heard of one. But, yeah, we have um, we usually have a good time. We've been doing it for almost, well, it'll be 10 years in October, and so it's been it's been it's been a good it's been a good ten years. That's excellent. Um, so you you do the Sunday ride. What other kinds of events do you do? You said you do um, uh, pay it forward events. Uh, well, actually, when we do that, we're actually out on rides itself. Those people we meet out there, help out people, and that. So then we give them gas cards and different things, and uh, it's been pretty neat out there meeting all the different people. We also go to rallies, uh, usually local. We haven't gone to any far rallies yet, uh, but that's kind of our goal. Uh, we do a lot of things with the ruffians. Uh, we used to go out to Columbia when Columbia was uh, they had a group out there, mid-mopeds, but they, I don't think they exist anymore. Uh, and I'm, the St. Louis ruffians, I don't know if you've heard of them or not, but we, we go down to their event every year, and we, uh, we cook breakfast for the whole uh, rally, and there's usually about 100 people there. Uh, the um... – well, a lot of times when we go down to the rallies, like down in like St. Louis, it's usually down around the arch somewhere. Uh, the the ruffians hold it, and we actually go down and we actually cook breakfast on Saturday morning. Cause they usually do it on a Memorial Day weekend, so it's a three-day event, so people have time to travel from all over the place. Because um, they'll be coming from, I think, New York and uh, all over the place. Yeah, uh, Detroit, you name it, they're coming from everywhere. So what we'll usually do is we'll set up a, a, a tent and we cook uh, uh, breakfast and then we serve it. And we give it away free. You know, we the church actually usually donates the money for the uh, for the ride for us for the, the food and that. And we go down there and we actually serve it to everybody. Usually like uh, sausage and uh, egg uh, burritos and uh, we help a lot of other snacks and stuff like that. I need to get to that rally. <laughs> that yeah, that it, sounds it's, like it's a good It's actually time. really cool. And so the um, – oh, yeah, we've been – yeah. And the way, uh, I, and I forgot to tell you in the history of our group, the way our um, group was named was when Larry and I started writing years ago, um, and then we started picking up a couple people here and there. Because we had a, we rode out of the church, and our church had supplied a space for a moped shop and everything, um, we, we, um, 
we start we start running out of the church and there was a group in the inner city of St. Louis called the IRE and that stood for it ran earlier and w and when uh, we started writing they w they said we needed to come up with a name and uh, and we didn't really have any ideas and so because we wrote out of a church they kind of named us the Holy Rollers to make fun of us and and in a in a good in a good in a good natured way you know they were just you know having fun with us and we're like fine we'll own that thing and uh, and we and we went with that name that they named us and uh, and we've been riding with that ever since and uh, and to be honest with you it was you know they they did it in good humor and we took it in good humor and we just ran with it and decided we're going to make that our name and go with it and um, and so that's how we ended up being the Holy Rollers and um, and we we normally don't call it we normally call ourselves the HR is what we normally go by and so um, but the uh, but it's um, it's been uh, it's been amazing, and what's kind of cool to give you an idea. This is this is a fun um, piece of um, trivia. Um, our the way we got our logo was Larry was de in the middle of designing our logo, and Danny here went and got it tattooed on his arm, and so we're like, okay, and we hadn't made all the changes, and we're like, okay, that that's our permanent logo then, and so that's how we ended up with our logo. I know I've got a couple of stickers around here with that logo on it as well. It's very well done. Mhm. Mm That's cool. Yeah, we we love collecting those things too, and um, the um the you know the you know the rally badges and stuff like that too. So. You know, we actually have a trailer we tote behind our van. We carry all our, our cooking equipment with us because we all of us will haul our bikes down to the downtown uh, for the ride and that, or wherever we're going. Uh, but we a lot of times the uh, different groups will put their sticker on our 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 trailer and that, so we've all these stickers all over our, our, our trailer and that because of that or our cars. Mm -hmm. That is too cool. But, but no, we've um the uh, it's been interesting because I was in my 30s when um I was like 38 when I started the with the HR you know and um and I've got, me and Larry ran it together for years and then Larry stepped back and he he ended up started riding mo mo motorcycles more and so Danny and I've been running it together for the last um probably what do you think four years or so uh well I've been running eight yeah you know, I'm talking about running as leadership yeah 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 or and, four years yeah and so and most of our founding members are still with us today so yeah, but we're we're a, a multi-age group. We I'd say like our core group of riders are probably in their uh, late 30s, mid mid 30s up to early 50s. Yeah. And then we our our oldest rider we had at one time was 78. 78, and we met him out riding around, and he ended up joining us and, and going on rides with us. Uh, but we have younger riders too. We have got you know several in their in their early 20s. Um, uh, some. Multi families where, where our kids actually ride the mopeds with us too, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Right, and um, and our group is uh, the the concept of it is uh, even though we ride out of a church, not everybody is part, you know, as like Danny was saying earlier, not part of the church. We also have atheists that ride with us. We have people that are of different religions that ride with us, and we just kind of include everybody in there, and we get together and just work as a community to just try to do good to the people we meet out in public. I think that's uh, that's doing mopeds for the right reason, mm -hmm. to get out and uh, give a good image and a good name to these little bikes and the people who ride them. Well, one of the things we do different than most groups, uh, as you probably realize at rallies, is like when you break down, everybody keeps on going. Um, <clears throat> we've learned to build camaraderie by if someone breaks down, we all break down. So we all sit down. We, if someone breaks down, we all stop. We Tool on the bike, get it going again, and we can get rushing going. You know, riding mm -hmm. some more. If not, we'll we have someone kind of on standby back somewhere. They, either we can ride a bike back and get a truck and pick them up, but we always try to complete the ride. You know, as a group, and so yeah. anywhere, everywhere we roll into, we roll in with the full amount of bikes as we can. Yeah, because we never we'll never leave somebody on the side of the road, and and we've tried to do that at rallies too, where if we can stop and help when somebody breaks down, we do that too. Definitely. I know the struggle bus can be half an hour, 45 minutes behind. Yeah. That's why yeah, I always so we, have two uh, uh, saddlebags full of parts and tools for all kinds yeah. of different bikes. That's pretty much what we do. We, we all carry tools and, and uh, parts with us. And uh, 
we have all different types of bikes in our group. So we have guys that are specialized in, let's say, Hondas or guys that are better with Pooks. So we all step in and help each other out, you know, to get guys bike up and going, especially new riders and stuff like that. And then we, we do a lot of times where we find someone that wants to ride with us. We'll actually have – we have uh, – or have in some that I don't know if we have any right now, but we had loaner bikes where we'd actually loan guys bikes to get them out, ride with us, and then we'd help them find their own bike uh, just to get them riding with us and that. And then if they liked it a lot, like I said, they'd buy their own bikes and that and then move on. Kind of a catch and release program sometimes. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. I, th I think it's cool that you guys hang back and, and try to get everybody going uh, yeah. at the same time. Yeah. What kind of um, spread of makes and models are there? Does there seem to be one overarching make uh, or model? I would say we have we have quite a few Honda Hobbits, but we have a lot of Pooks. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a few Saxes, Motor uh, a couple of Motor McCains. Uh, most of our guys have multiple bikes, so it depends on the day, what they're riding for the day, or what's running, what's yeah. not running. But those seem to be with the main ones we, we usually have. We have a couple of them uh, with more specialty bikes and that. And then most of our, a lot of our bikes are kind of monster. We got a couple of bikes that are monster mm -hmm. bikes, so they just parted a bunch of bikes together and yeah. got it running. And we also uh, don't discriminate from like scooters and and notepads from riding with us too. We like you know if they if as long as they got two wheels, they can ride with us for nice mm -hmm. and we, you know, we allow them to ride with us. The more the merrier. Yeah, we even had uh, a Ninja Motorcycle ride with us a couple times. Right on. But but what's really cool, though, is we have the full backing of the church, and they uh, they sponsor us, and they help with, you know, with uh, if we need to do something, and the, the group don't have the finances, um, they, tr they they will step up and back us up. And, and what's really cool is on the front of our church sign, um, it, on, the, on the front of our church, and the sign in front of our church, it even says, Home of the Holy Roller Moped Gang. Wow, so you're very deeply integrated. Yeah, and but yeah, but there's only a handful of us that are actually part of the church. I'm actually the pastor of the church. Oh, how cool is that? I wish uh, yeah. go, growing up, my my pastor did cool stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 been really really cool, and the the whole church just will will come in and back it up and do whatever they can. And one of the things we do a lot behind the scenes is um, whenever people are going through personal struggles, we've made a, through Facebook, we've made a lot of, um, we've made a lot of connection with people when they're going through personal struggles in their life. Usually in a, they will reach out to us and we'll help them behind the scenes. And, um, and we, we, we don't really talk about it publicly, never name names or tell what people's struggles are, but we've helped people through some pretty serious life crises over the years too. And so we kind of, um, off the off the record, we kind of, you know what I mean is you know we don't talk about this much, but we kind of function you know through the Facebook um you know the ch not chat um the Facebook inbox thing. We kind of um basically serve as moped chaplains for lack of better words. I had no idea that that sort of um uh, resource was available in the clubs. Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't really publicize or advertise it. It's just been building relationships with people one-on-one -on -one, and then when they deal with stuff. Because, um, you know, in the MOPA, as you know, in the MOPA community, you deal with a lot of people, and we've seen, uh, we've helped some, you know, because a lot of people, you know, some people have deal with addiction. Some people deal with, you know, family issues and stuff. And so um, whenever, when we build personal relationships with them, you know, at the rally or, you know, just getting to know them through Facebook and stuff, they will reach out to us when they're going through hard times and we're always open to that. And, and we always keep everything confidential and we just, you know, we just kind of help them out behind the scenes. Wow. That's incredible. I've never heard of something like that in mm -hmm. any uh, motor sports or power sports community. That's an amazing thing you guys are doing for, for the community. Now, mm -hmm. if somebody wanted to be a puddle, blah, 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 blah. Wow. I got several names in front of me here. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to be a holy roller, how do they go about getting into the club? Well, a lot of times it just it means just showing up and riding with us. 
Mm -hmm. uh, to be official member, we, we originally set up in the, in the in our bylaws. We actually made rules of our club, so we have uh, rules that, uh, you know, for example, if uh, if a if a person is riding with us, we have certain rules. They can't be like showboating and uh, riding on careless, because one of our biggest uh, pet peeves is, is 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 protection of the group. Uh, like like a lot of times when we ride on the road, we ride and see like the motorcycles are riding pairs. We ride in pairs side by side. Uh, a lot of times, as for protection to keep each other, we put our our, our weaker riders to the you know the inside uh, curb where they can be they can get out away from the traffic if we're traveling on busy roads. Uh, but uh, a lot of times, it, it, it's more of a year to see how they click with the group and that it's it's nothing discriminatory or like that. But we they have to be good, a fit with us too that we're not going to uh, endanger any of our riders or cause any problems with people in the public as we're going out because we try to be a positive in the public. Uh, but that's pretty much our only. Yeah. Uh, and and the thing is, is we kind of um, over the years we kind of enforced a zero drama policy with the group because sometimes you know as you get people together you know you you'll get once in a while you get a bad apple they'll try to stir up drama and we just kind of move them down the road if they do that and and it's not that we're trying to be hard it's just that we've worked really hard to develop um to develop a really neat community, you know what I mean, a very diverse people in it, you know, because we all have different backgrounds, different different re religions, different philosophies in life and everything, di even different lifestyles, but we try to, um, in our group, we try to foster a community of honor toward one another, and we, and, and what we do is um, we not only respect each other's differences, we celebrate them. I am actually sort of speechless. That's a very different ideology or practice than what I normally hear of in some of the more hardcore groups. Well, a lot, a lot of times, like when we're in public, uh, we'll purposely uh, uh, ride up into certain areas and we'll actually talk to people as they're coming by. Because a lot of times uh, in some of the areas we go to, we go to some historical areas, we'll pull up and we'll line all the bikes up on the street. And people will come up to us and talk to us. And, you know, they Usually they're asking about the speed of the bikes or the kind of bikes they are. And we, so we meet a lot of people all the time, so we always want to be a positive to them too. And um, what's really cool is when we get when we go out in those public places and we line up the bikes, usually it's like Danny was talking about, it starts out with them talking about the bikes, but then eventually they'll start, you know, they will get comfortable and they end up sharing their life story. And we usually find out um, stuff that they're struggling with or anything. And, and as a pastor, you know, we get the opportunity to minister to them on the street sometimes. But then those in our group who don't, you know, believe, you know, that way, that's cool too. And what we do is we always encourage them to do the pay it forwards. And so we, we always try to um, have um, gift cards if somebody's struggling financially or something, we can give out gift cards and stuff. But we don't really publicize that. It's just something we kind of do. Um, we kind of do low key. It's really interesting that you guys put so much emphasis on a positive public image and an, an open open arms approach. Usually most clubs are, are pretty closed off unless uh, unless you've got a bike yourself or something. It's yeah. very, very good to hear that. Um, well, one so of the things we noticed is I'm sorry. One of the, one of the things we noticed was like like when the rallies, uh, like for example the rallies here in Missouri, uh, when we first started getting into the mopeds, they like the Columbia group, uh, mid mopeds, they're they're no longer existed no more. But uh, um, they were more of a college boy uh, fraternity type club uh, moped group, and the inner city group, the IRE, was more of a uh, more of like a motorcycle gang type group. And so we never wanted to be uh, we wanted to be somewhere in the middle. We wanted to be where we could go into any any uh, rally and be a part of a rally anywhere we go with being you know diverse because you have some groups that are like you said before that uh, have very strict rules. Very, they're very uh, they they have, they wear the leather jackets uh, like our logos are usually on the back of a, a t-shirt. Uh, that's about the extent that we'll go with the t-shirt. Uh, we made hats before, um, stickers, bumper stickers, type of things like that. Um, but we want to be encouraging to any other group. But like when we go to rallies, we actually wear our 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 our, our colors, as you would want to say. More, it's more for a week, so we can keep track of where our riders are. It's not really to show who who we are, where we're from. It's more because we're, we're so busy watching our other riders, making sure our other riders are safe during their rallies. As you know, the the groups get piled up a lot of times, and um, we we put our weaker riders even at rallies with a real good rider, so they can kind of keep them protected for a while. Till the pack starts to spread out. And yeah. one of the things, um, 
like with you know with the different groups you know because what we try to do is we try to set our group up where if somebody comes more from the biker type of uh, biker type of moped gang they will fit in with our group if they come from you know the col- more the college age our college uh, student group they will fit in with our group and so we try to we we do try to cultivate an environment where everybody feels comfortable and they're free to be themselves you know what I mean definitely and I think that's altogether too uncommon across Mm -hmm. the the moped clubs and that's uh, being a little off myself that's very good to hear that you try to foster such an inclusive atmosphere grabbing people from all walks as they say Yeah, and the, one of the things we do do though as a group that is um that is different from other groups, and so if somebody wants to be a member of a group, this is one of the things that is a that some of them may may some of them may embrace, but it's it's difficult for them, especially at rallies. One of the things we ask is when um when when people ride with us when we do when we do our just our local group rides. We ask that they not drink while they're riding because we got people in our group that will have, you know, that would drink and stuff. But we ask that they not drink because we do have um, so many members of our group that have come off a of drug addiction and also come off of, um, you know, being addicted to alcohol where, you know, where they it had ruined their lives and then they pulled themselves up out of that, out of, um, because, I mean, we've had people that were, you know, have had just broken lives and we just, um, and so what we do as a group is we, if you want to be a member of the HR, um, you have to do your year with us, but then also you have to commit to on on official rides that you don't drink or anything because you got to help support those that have come out of addictions and stuff. And so, and we when we go to rallies, we as a group we on purpose, you know, those who who would normally have beer or whatever, they don't do that at the rallies just to stand in support of the other group members who are who are um, who are former alcoholic or who are recovering alcoholics and or recovering drug addicts and stuff. And so we, we kind of, we kind of, you know, that way they can go to rallies where there's usually a lot of partying and stuff. That way they can go to rallies and be comfortable knowing that we got their back and they're not going to, they're not going to fall back into their old addictions and stuff. I think every crew leader and every crew member listening to this podcast throughout the world has something to learn from the Holy Rollers. Is there anyone you wanted to give a shout out to or any groups or businesses you wanted to promote here tonight? Well, we want to, um, well, we want to say, um, thank you to the ruffians, uh, for being, uh, the ruffians in St. Louis for all the ruffians moped gang for being such, um, great friends to the HR over the years. We really appreciate every rider of the ruffians and they have been just really supportive. And for the former members of Midmo who do still ride on occasion, um, they have been just an amazing support to us over the years, and we appreciate them as well. And also, um, and also, um, and we, you know, we're always grateful to the to the congregation of Freedom Church for always supplying the food and the funds for the food for the to cook at the rallies and things. And also, the church, uh, Freedom Church, gives um, the HR use of the church van, and then they they have dedicated a enclosed trailer that we use for to haul all the cooking equipment and everything. And so we thank Freedom Church too. And and Ashley, I appreciate as you know as the as the one of the founding members of the HR, I appreciate what you're doing for the moped community by. Um, doing this and helping to get everybody to know each other. This is really amazing. Thank you. Yes, that's the whole point of the podcast. Um, And then also, and also one last thing, want to give a special shout out to Chad Burke because um, he is amazing. And uh, we always enjoy when he comes to to the St. Louis rallies and, um, and guys like him, you know, help foster a really incredible moped community. And we appreciate all his work over the years with the mopeds and stuff. It sounds like you've got some stand-up guys around your area, and it sounds like the church is behind you 100%. Yeah, they uh, they really are. Was there anything else you guys wanted to talk about or thought about while we were talking earlier that popped into your heads? No, not really. I think we, we about covered everything about us. Where were you? Where you come from? I'm up here in Minnesota. Ah. Okay. 
casserole or territory. Okay. okay. So it's uh, okay. it's starting to warm up up here a little bit. Everybody's they're at least getting their bikes idling. We're all we're all ho- we're all just waiting for that first sixty degree day. Yeah, yes, usually when we ride. We'll ride usually uh, uh, beginning of April, end of March uh, was usually when our first ride is, and we'll ride usually we end it but uh, right around the end of October, just depending on the weather. If we can ride longer, we've ridden on the uh, New Year's Day a couple times just for fun. Uh, we've had a couple warm-up days like that where, where we'll pop bikes out and do that. But uh, it's just uh, smaller groups on those type of tails, you know. Oh, definitely. At one point, I had casually mentioned before this episode that I was going to interview you guys, and the reaction was either who or, oh, those Jesus freak guys. And it definitely seems like you don't have an air about you where you go out and preach or evangelize while you're out riding. Can you tell me more about that? We have a rule with our group. We don't go out and preach to anybody at rallies or anywhere like that. And I'm a pastor, and, and I strictly enforce that because our purpose is not to go out there and preach at people or shove anything down anybody's throat. And um, we've dismissed a couple people over the years that had come into the group and tried to do that, you know, with uh, – because we, we had a guy that he wasn't even part of our group. He just he showed up one time and went to a rally with us, and he was just um, jamming religion down everybody's throats. And we told him, you'll never ride with us again because of that. And we we have a real strict policy on that because that's not what we're about. And um, and, and just because of um, we started out of a church and everything, we do kind of get that stigma attached to us sometimes, and it is a little bit difficult to overcome. And uh, but I'm a I'm you know I'm the pastor of this church and and I enforce a strict um, thing with that because that's not a good representation of what um, the Christian faith was all about. It was about to go out there and show love to one another, show out go out there and do good to one another, and um, to draw people together. Because the the way we we approach things like I was telling you about when people that we encounter like in the moped community. Because um, we do have quite a few people that will contact us behind the scenes, but and it wasn't because we appreciate them. It was because we just went out there and just befriended them and just served them. And when they approach us, we they come to us because they, we have built that relationship and that trust with them that um, that you know they feel like they can come talk to us about something that's going on in their life, and we can and we've been able to be great assistance to them to a bunch of people over the years that way. But um, it's not something that anybody talks about, but it's just what we do. And, and, um, and the thing is, is we as a group have never, um, we have never done that. You know, we have never on purpose or, on, or anything gone out to just go out there and shove anything down anybody's throats. Let your actions and your personalities speak for themselves. Exactly. That's a, a very good mantra to have. Was there anything else you guys wanted to talk about or, or go over? No. No, um, if you got any more questions, uh, we'll we'll answer anything. <laughs> I am totally tapped out. Okay. That was well, everything I had. Wow. It was a really it was really an honor to get to talk to you over this and get to know you some. And um and we do hope that you will be able to make it to the Saint Louis rally that the ruffians are throwing and um and it would be an honor to get to meet you. I agree. Now, now that I've got the Bratmobile, I can actually get a couple of bikes inside the van and head out wherever I need to go. So this year will be there will be a a lot further I'm willing to travel. And I don't oh, think Missouri's awesome. too far. Yeah. That'd be awesome because it, it's a really it's a really neat rally that they have downtown St. Louis. The ruffians do amazing with it. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again for coming on and telling us all about the Holy Rollers. No problem. We're glad to do it. And uh, thank you for uh, what you're doing with this. This is really neat. All right. You guys have a good night. Okay. And you too, uh, Ashley. I'm a good one. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye. This has been another episode of Brabcast. I'm your host, Ashley Ackley, and tonight we were joined by Danny Laminger and Aaron Burnaby from the Holy Rollers. Do you have a crew, shop, or super rad moped you would like featured on our show? 
Tell us about it on Facebook at BrapCast. Find our other episodes on SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, and the Google Play Store. Be sure to subscribe for the newest videos every Wednesday. Until next time, stay happy and stay brappy.